going on everybody this is bobby g aka bobby bookworm back with another saturday spiel and now that the storm is cleared the sun is kind of outside um so you can kind of see the shining a little bit today's portion is uh parashat re'e which if you uh don't have if you haven't heard uh hebrew or read that in particular uh, there are different portions that happen every week, and they are named in uh, Hebrew and in English because they go through the books of, of Moses. And in this case, Re'eh is in uh, Deuteronomy, and Re'eh means behold. So Re'eh means to behold. And this week, we have um, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26, to chapter 16, verse 17. Uh, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 11 to chapter 55 verse 5 and we have John chapter 6 verses 35 to 51 which comes from torportions.org and chapter 7 verses 32 37 to 52 uh, which comes from chosen people ministries um, I say that to say that uh, for those who haven't been here before that usually there's three readings in the messianic community compared to the two traditional Readings in synagogue, which are the Torah and the Half Torah, which are the books of Moses and the prophets and or writings. On the Messianics, because we believe in Yeshua, we have uh, what's known as a third reading, although some Messianic communities do things a little differently, depending on which site you go to, whether it's TorahPortions.org or Chosen People Ministries. In my case, I do both, probably because I'm an at-large member of CPM. Also, by the way, uh, it is going to be Rosh Chodesh tomorrow, which is uh, the month of Elul. Uh, Rosh Chodesh, which for those of you who don't know, Rosh means head, and Chodesh means month, so it's Rosh Chodesh, head of the month, uh, on the Jewish calendar. It is going to be um, Elul, which is the last month of the Jewish calendar before Rosh Hashanah, which is New Year. So we are in the last month uh, of the Jewish civil calendar, is what's known, which goes uh, from September to Septem- September to the end of August. Um, and in the Holy Calendar, it is uh, starting from Passover or Pesach, which is usually about March, April, uh, to about that time. Now, in today's portion, the thing that came to mind as I was studying a few times this week, and as I was studying before I started, was that you can either live blessed or you can live cursed. You can either have a blessed life or you can have a cursed life. And how that works out is not simply dependent upon whether or not you know Scripture. I mean, Scripture is important to know, make no mistake. But the common theme that I see is a personal relationship with God. In the case of the children of Israel, they had a personal relationship with God. The prophet Isaiah, who we read from, also had a personal relationship with God. And in the case of the book of John, the Gospel of John, we see Yeshua, the Son of God, uh, which is part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, building relationships and saying that if people want to live, they need to come to Him. Uh, not just the rules of Torah, right? And in the case of Deuteronomy, it has um, sets up where God says, See, I have set before you the blessing. If you if you live and follow me, you'll be obedient to me and and seek me out, and I have the curse before you if you don't seek me out. And there are a couple things that uh, he says out there, for example, if you hear a false prophet preaching anything that is against God, where you go away and worship other gods and say, you know, let's follow after them, that false prophet is someone that's supposed to be dealt with. Um, he also has um, the three festivals. He also has um, what is kosher, what you can and cannot eat. If you want to, and by the way, for those who don't know, you can eat meat uh, in a kosher diet. The difference is, is that, and they say this in Deuteronomy, is that you're not supposed to eat the blood of any animal. And the reason you're not supposed to do that is because the life is in the blood, meaning you're not supposed to disrespect life. Okay? You're supposed to drain it on the ground. Um, and that's the thing is that there's an utmost respect for life, not just of other people, but there's a uh, uh, dare I say it, humane treatment of animals 
uh, to a degree, even though you eat meat. But again, there's there's a certain way of going about things. There's a right way and a wrong way. And the right way is to treat animal, animals humanely. Um, that's just kind of an aside. But the point of it is that the point of doing these things, the point of, of eating kosher um, and having blessing and cursing set before them and so on. And you see this in Isaiah where God talks about, you know, when you follow me and you walk after me, everyone will be taught by God and that time will eventually come. And uh, Yeshua, Jesus, quotes Isaiah in the book of John. And in chapter 6, he talks about how he is the uh, bread of life. And in chapter 7, he talks about whoever comes after me, what will happen will spring up in him living water. And what he meant by when he talks about uh, living water is he was referring, as it says in John, to the Luch, meaning the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, the Luch HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit. And to seek after God is to live. To follow God's ways is to live. And not just because of the rules and regulations are there, because that was the thing that the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't get. You know, it wasn't about the Torah and what had later become the tradition of the rabbis, what many people had followed. Or what you would consider today uh, the traditions of denominations or the doctrines of different denominations is not what following God is about. It's having a personal relationship with Yeshua, Jesus. It is about having, as a result of that, a relationship with God the Father, also in God the Holy Spirit. To, to have a relationship with the full Godhead, so to speak. Um, and... That if we love God and we have a personal relationship with God, then it is out of that love that we have for God because God first loved us, that we will live and that we will have living water and that Jesus is the bread of life. And to, to follow him is to live. Um, what he teaches, what he has is the bread of life. And so to live and to follow God, to follow Yeshua, Jesus is to live a blessed life, to not follow God, and to, to go after other gods, which some people may say, well, we don't have gods today. Ah, not true. In many countries today, there are people who have deities and statues still to this day in certain parts of the world. Even here in the United States, there are certain religions. And I'm going to give a hot take, but there are certain belief systems that have deities. And sometimes people may say, well, that's, that, you know, we don't worship statues or not. You may not worship statues, but you have to ask yourself, is there anything... That you put before God. Is there any. Is it a lifestyle? Is it position? Is it power? Is it a job? You know, is there anything that you do that turns you away from God? That turns you away from Jesus? That deafens your ears so that you cannot hear the Holy Spirit? Because if that is what's going on in your life, then you cannot expect to live a blessed life because you're not following God and you're not hearing God. So the question to ask yourself this week, are you living a blessed life? And by blessed life, I don't mean by being rich. I mean by being content in what God has given you and being content in your relationship with God. Or are you living a cursed life? These are things to think about as you go through the week. My name's Bobby G, aka Bobby Bookworm. This is my Saturday spiel. Lord willing, I hope to see y'all next week. Peace.